A Stuart 10 V steam engine rebuild, part seven making a top cylinder gasket and fitting it in place. During reassembly of the engine, I needed to make some final modifications. Here's a kit of parts, some which have been repaired, on the bench, ready to fit together. Before doing that, I need to make a top cylinder cover gasket. During this series, I've shown a couple of different ways of making gaskets. The first way was to draw around the cylinder block, but for the top cover, I'm just actually drawing around the cover. Then I just cut it out using my rather attractive pair of scissors. I don't know where these came from, but they're very useful, because they're quite small and delicate. Not at all like me. I trimmed the gasket accurately to size, then as I showed in the last episode, I used a very small ball-pane hammer to mark the position for the hole that I need to cut in the centre. I make a lot of gaskets, and I've shown quite a few methods in previous episodes, these include an ink pad, a compass, and the small ball pane hammer method. I cut out the centre of the gasket and then pushed it onto the register of the top cylinder cover. Then I simply marked the hole positions using a pencil. I supported the gasket in my fingers while I marked it out with the pencil. And whilst I was doing that, I was pushing the pencil against my fingers. And that's why it's not a good idea to use a scriber although that is a method that I use frequently. I haven't shown the drilling of the gasket, it's quite straightforward. Here I'm showing the fitting of the top cylinder cover in place. I'm being very careful with the cylinder head bolts. One of the holes in the top of the cylinder has been damaged by a previous over-tightening of the bolts. I was very gentle with that one. The other five bolt holes were fine, and I tightened the entire assembly, including the gasket, onto the cylinder. Now it's time to pack the stuffing gland, and for this, in exactly the same way as I packed the piston rod gland, I'm using Teflon coated yarn. I cut a suitable length from the piece of Teflon coated yarn that I unpicked in a previous episode. There are one or two things that you need to remember when packing stuffing glands, and by far the most important of these things to do when packing stuffing glands is to put the gland nut in place on the valve spindle or piston rod before you wrap the gland packing material around the shaft. Believe me, it is easy to forget to do this. Another thing, I always make sure that I wind the gland packing around the shaft in the right direction, so that the tail of the yarn is tightened against the shaft when you fit the gland nut. It's also a good idea to apply some steam oil to the yarn before you fit the part into the steam chest or cylinder. Before I go any further, I want to show you this. It's a fundamental error with this engine during manufacture. I showed the details in a previous video in the series. I was going to turn the gunmetal valve around, but two things became apparent. With the valve turned round, there was insufficient travel inside the steam chest. And option two, which was to silver solder some small blocks in the centre of the valve, would also unfortunately collide with the steam chest when the valve was going up and down. This was the first fitting of the steam chest with the valve in place. I applied plenty of oil, but I wasn't happy because there was no play whatsoever in the valve and it was pushed hard up against the port face all the time and this is not right. You can see clearly in this clip how close the slide valve is to the edge of the steam chest. To make it so that the steam holds the valve against the valve chest rather than mechanical pressure, I just need to remove a little metal from the drive block. I did this using a drum sander in my bench-mounted Proxon drill. In this part of the clip, I'm just cleaning off the burrs after the operation. This clip shows the modified drive block in position, and here you can see that it does sit quite a lot lower in the valve, so when it's in the right position held by the valve rod, there will be a clearance, which is what you need. I'm demonstrating this principle. Now the steam will hold the valve against the block and not the pressure of the valve rod, which would cause premature wear. It won't be very long now before I run this engine, so I'm getting ready for an oiling marathon. Don't forget that before I repainted the engine, it was sat in a bath of cellulose thinners, which would have removed any oil on the moving parts. Now I need to put that right. I'm pleased to say that the eccentric rod is a good fit now in the valve fork. It's not tight like it was previously. The bolt is not right though, it's a plain shank bolt, but the plain shank is too long. 
I'll use a different one when I finally assemble the engine. The final part of the assembly is to tighten the nuts that hold the steam chest cover to the steam chest and in turn tighten everything up against the port face. When I did this before I shortened the valve drive block, the engine felt very tight, but now the drive block is the correct size, it feels very good. In the end I did turn the valve chest around because I will need to fit a displacement lubricator at this side. And here I've temporarily fitted the original steam inlet piping that came with the engine. Here I'm just being a bit paranoid, I don't want to damage the engine by running it dry, so once again I'm applying even more oil to every moving part that I can see. I've connected my compressed air line, and when I turn on the air, the engine bursts into life. It didn't run like this when I first received it. With the odd-shaped inlet ports on the valve block, caused by the drill bit coming through at the wrong angle, the engine is more advanced than usual, but this is a good thing. Here I'm rotating the engine with some compressed air being fed to it, and admission is before top dead centre, slightly more than I'd like it to be. Generally speaking, steam engines run a lot better with advanced valve timing. Because the steam is admitted early, it cushions all of the reciprocating parts, but does it run slowly? Well, yes it does. And the strokes are positive and the beats are OK. Because the engine has a silicone rubber piston ring, the piston is a perfect seal in the cylinder. What I'm doing here is just checking the colour of the oil coming out of the engine. And the good news, the oil coming out of the exhaust is fairly clean, so everything is well with the cylinder and the piston. The black oil you can see is part of the running in process. When all the black stuff disappears, you can assume that the engine is well run in. This slow motion clip shows that the beats are not perfectly even, but they should get better when the engine runs in and becomes smoother. After this episode, the name of the series is going to change. As I build this engine into a steam plant, you'll see a lot more of this engine running when the steam plant is built. But that's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.